And you know, I'd say our goal now is still to become one of the best stills the Sharks ever missed. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 rejected Shark Tank pitches that became successful. It makes soap. Is that cool? I thought I did pretty well. Um, I, you know, I, I, B plus. So we didn't get funded, uh, but I think we're the Shark Tank loser that's going to laugh all the way to the bank. For this list, we're looking at the best business proposals that failed to get funded on Shark Tank but went on to become successful anyway. Even if they're not currently still in business, as long as they found success after their pitch, they're fair game. Which failed Shark Tank pitch was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Bed Jet. Season six of Shark Tank gave NASA engineer Marco Romley the financial opportunity of a lifetime. His invention, the Bed Jet. A climate control system made especially for beds, this device helps to alleviate the discomfort of a bed getting too hot or too cold. What I have a problem with is that when I asked about the technology, you kept on selling. I just don't like the vibe. I just don't think you have all the pieces yet to go forward. And so for those reasons, I'm out. All five sharks rejected the pitch, with Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful as ever, going as far as to say, quote, you will never sell this device. Well, sharks, we got some news for you. This did sell, and it sold well. If you've ever woken up too hot, you've ever woken up too cold, and you wish you could just press a button mm -hmm. and have your bed feel exactly the way you want, that's what our product does. In fact, by the end of 2020, the company had sold its 100,000th unit and launched additional add-on products. Number 19, Hikon LLC. This entry is unique in that it was both a success and a failure when it came to working with Shark Tank. Hikon. Hikon is the world's fastest way to connect and disconnect from a hydrant. Let me show you how that's done. Built for fire departments as a faster way to attach fire hoses to hydrants, Hikon was originally funded by Mark Cuban, but the deal fell through shortly after the episode aired. So, although this pitch was accepted, Hikon founder Jeff Stroop had to go his own way, and according to NerdWallet, eventually grew the company's value up to as high as $5 million. Since then, however, it seems this hose adapter may have lost its adaptability. Both the company's website and their social media presence have gone cold, and their online store is no longer available. Number 18, Kodiak Cakes. Aside from possibly getting funded, the biggest advantage to appearing on a show like Shark Tank is the opportunity for visibility. Hey Sharks, I'm Joel Clark. And I'm Cam Smith. And our product is Kodiak Cakes. We're here seeking $500,000 in exchange for 10% of the business. Kodiak cakes were already selling in Safeways and Targets, but the business owners, Joel Clark and Cameron Smith, decided Shark Tank would be a good way to gain more exposure. And when I was eight years old, I went around the neighborhood and sold pancake mixes like these out of a red wagon. <laughs> <laughs> My mom had always wanted to sell her whole wheat pancake recipe as a mix. They managed to get two offers, but felt that the sharks undervalued the company's worth, so they walked away. It turned out they had been right about gaining exposure, though, because within six weeks of the episode airing, they had brought in a million dollars of additional revenue. Shortly after, the success of their business was taken to whole new heights with the launch of new protein power cakes. The sharks certainly missed a sweet opportunity. It's always been about great tasting food um, that's nutritious, that's, that's actually good for you. Number 17, The Books Company. You would think that a flower shop wouldn't have anything all that unique to offer. Well, how about getting your flowers shipped straight from a flower farm at the bottom of a volcano? In season five, John Tabas tried to get funding for his flower delivery company. The sharks were very impressed by the quality, but took issue with the lengthy delivery time. It's a flower business. I think it's a terrible name. It is six days to delivery. Whoa. Whoa. I'm out. That killed any chance of John getting an offer, and he left sharkless. But that didn't stop him from persevering in his business, though. And three years later, one of the sharks came back to bite. Robert Herjavec was looking for wedding flowers and remembered the company. I say, John, Robert from Shark Tank, how can flowers cost so much? He said, come and see me, I'll explain the flower business to you. After being so impressed by how they had grown, he became an investor. Number 16, The Smart Baker. Husband and wife team Daniel and Stephanie Rensing launched an entire business out of a measurement conversion cheat sheet Daniel created for his wife in the form of an apron. Since most recipes call for an amount much too high for just two people, I'm always left on my own to scale recipes down and convert odd measurements. When she lost her job, Stephanie put all of her time and effort into turning her baking accessories into a business. 
In order to get their products out to a larger market, they appeared on Shark Tank in search of an investor. What's unique is that it's printed upside down, so you can read it while you're wearing it. Within two weeks of creating the cheat sheet apron and putting it online, we quickly went from selling a few a week to over 50 a day. They did secure a deal with Barbara Corcoran. You gotta do it. I will take it. Go. But it ultimately fell through and they continued on their own. The exposure from the show was well worth the trip, however, because the following year saw their revenue grow to $600,000. They have since added several other products to their repertoire, including cake towers and specialized parchment paper. Number 15. Voyage Air Guitar If you've ever had to transport a guitar anywhere, this is a product that'll catch your eye. But that's not all they do. They don't just look good, they don't just sound good. Jeff Cohen and his son Josh came on Season 1 to pitch a unique acoustic guitar with a foldable neck. They fold in half. In the original episode, they were offered $500,000 for 51% of the company, but Jeff was not interested in giving up that much. You're going in the wrong direction. It's so obvious. Mr. Guitar Guy and son who hasn't said anything yet. After walking away, the company received a lot of exposure due to the episode and saw major successes. Jeff returned in season three and secured a deal with Kevin O'Leary, only to have it cut from the episode. They have since secured a licensing deal with Fender, one of the largest manufacturers of string instruments in the world. Number 14. Eco Nuts Upon hearing this name, you might be fooled into believing this is another one of those healthy snack options. Turns out this product isn't even edible. This is our secret weapon. It's an organic berry from the Himalayas that naturally produces a soap. Mona Weiss and Scott Shields entered the tank to pitch their eco-friendly soap substitute, which is made from the soap nuts of a Himalayan lychee tree, hence the name. It releases a natural soap as it gets shaken around, which can do your laundry. Even before appearing on the show, their little business was quite busy, raking in $100,000 in sales the year prior. Scott estimated that it was a million dollar market, but the sharks didn't buy it and the two were sent packing. Their time in the tank yielded them a boost in sales and actually did put them past the million dollar mark. The company is still around today and has expanded to include other products. Number 13, Lip Bar. Our messaging is empowerment. Breaking into the beauty industry isn't an easy thing to do, but these two makeup artists were determined. Pitching their all natural and extensively colored line of lipsticks, Entrepreneurs Melissa Butler and Roscoe Spears managed to impress the sharks with the quality of their product. Where are you making these? I actually make them by hand myself. You make them by yes, hand? Yes, so at, I didn't have... At home? Yes. However, the duo's weak numbers and confused marketing strategy had the sharks bowing out. Apparently, magazines like Cosmopolitan and Ebony thought otherwise, however, as the two have enjoyed coverage from both and have launched their own mobile lip bar tour to further spread their brand. It's tough to pitch a lipstick company to a group of four guys. It's almost impossible. Number 12. Meal Enders Have you ever finished a meal and felt completely full, yet you still reached for an extra snack? Yeah, happens to the best of us. Meal Enders gets it, though. Signaling lozenges that combine behavioral psychology and sensory science to help you beat overeating, master portion control, and curb snacking. Their product comes in the form of lozenges intended to discourage overeating. After selling more than a million dollars worth of product, founder Mark Bernstein went into the tank looking for additional investors to grow his business. Watch your sales in a year and a half. $1.4 million. Although they were intrigued at first, in the end, none of the sharks wanted in. However, as we've mentioned, exposure can sometimes be worth just as much as a deal, and his product made over $400,000 in just a few days after the episode aired. The lozenges are still currently for sale on Amazon and on Mealender's website. Number 11. Hammer and Nails The market for men's hygiene and personal care is ever increasingly on the rise. Unfortunately, for men interested in hand care and foot care, there aren't a lot of options that don't involve salons directly targeted to women. Michael Elliott wanted to change that with a line of salons dedicated to men. In my shop, guys feel right at home with low lighting in oversized leather chairs just like this, wearing high-end headphones. In the end, Elliott wasn't able to convince any of the sharks to go into business with him. Kevin, it's the only thing that speaks the truth to a franchisee is cash flow. No, listen. That's what they want to know, cash and flow. I but his appearance on the show gave him the $200,000 he was looking for from other investors. 
Elliott opted to franchise his brand, which allowed the business to expand beyond a few shops here and there. Hammer and Nail Salons for Men are now available all across the United States. Number 10. Slasa. When was the last time you were at a grilling or tailgating event and someone actually complimented the host or hostess on their condiments? Get a little coleslaw, a little salsa, throw in some mustard, and you've got the unique condiment called slasa. Right now, I'd like for you all to taste slasa and how truly slawsome it is. While Julie Boucher isn't the creator of the hamburger and hot dog topping, she is the owner of the company after having purchased it in 2013. For the garlic lovers like Robert, we have a garlic and a garlic spicy. Thank you. We have the original and the spicy as well. She was thus the one to pitch the brand on season five of Shark Tank, subsequent to introducing the product to more than 4,000 stores across the US. If we had not saved up, I wouldn't have taken a leap to become an entrepreneur. So that's my responsibility. Her tenacity earned her admiration from the Sharks, but unfortunately not their funds. Since her appearance on the show, Slasa has expanded to the shelves of more than 7,000 stores. Number 9. Rocket Book What are you selling to Martians? People love it. It's fun. Making it to number one on Amazon is every developer's dream, and these two managed to do it without the Sharks' help. Pitching their idea for a reusable digital notebook that was reset by putting it in the microwave. Entrepreneurs Jake Epstein and Joe LeMay claim to have a revolutionary idea on their hands. There's a lot of engineering that has gone into the construction of a microwave safe notebook. However, not only did the Sharks not see an opportunity with the product, they laughed the duo off the show, right into the arms of success. Shortly after airing, Epstein and LeMay reported earnings of over $10 million, and The Rocket Book was Amazon's number one best-selling notebook in November 2016. Number 8. Coffee Meets Bagel Sharks, I know what you're thinking. It's another <laughs> dating site. These sisters said it themselves. It's yet another dating site. However, the idea behind the app which allows users to meet potential dates through mutual friends on social media, was unique enough that it sparked a huge offer from Shark Mark Cuban, $30 million for the entire company. Let me ask you a question. If I offered you $30 million for the company, would you take it? No. The sisters refused, preferring to keep the company for themselves. Though the offer itself fell through, seeing the interest from Cuban drew other investors to the app once the show aired. Enjoying massive amounts of marketing exposure and investor interest, the app continues to grow and make its mark in the world of online dating. Well, you buy it. It's you buy the mystery, mystery, right? It's the mystery. mystery. A lot of people want to know, how am I connected to this person? Number 7. Cell Helmet uh, Basically, the way it works is oh, when you I purchase- I hate your business model so much, I have to punish you. I just don't know how. <laughs> it's a profitable venture. Even billionaires drop their phones sometimes. To avoid the problem of smashed phone screens, David Artuso and Mike Kane came up with an idea for a tougher phone case, as well as a guaranteed repair or replacement if the phone broke while within it. Are we magicians? Not at all. We just happen to be the only company on Earth who's bundling our protective accessories with a safety net of accidental damage coverage. Unfortunately, the sharks weren't biting predicting that bigger companies with larger budgets would pounce on the idea as soon as Cell Helmet became big. It didn't take long for the investors to scatter. But upon arriving home, the two founders immediately discovered that their inbox was filled with offers from other investors. Cell Helmet has been available at over 3,000 wireless stores across the U.S. It's time for you to get on the boat, and it's with heavy heart that I set it afire and float it out of the tank. Thank you, guys. Appreciate right. your time. Number six, Zero Shoes. Zero Shoes are a high-tech version of mankind's favorite footwear since 15,000 B.C. Even with the Sharks' expert financial advice, sometimes you might be able to see your company's potential better than they ever could. After pitching an ultra-minimal sandal for either day-to-day -day or running use, Stephen Sashin and Lena Phoenix predicted that their product was worth $5 million. Calling the sandals nothing more than, quote, rubber and a string, the sharks scattered. But the money soon started rolling in. In the week after the show aired, Zero Shoes managed to sell the same amount they usually sold in three months. The sandals might be simple, but they sell. They've somehow captured the essence of an athlete. Number 5. Proof Eyewear 
Entrepreneurs like us don't grow on trees, even though the majority of our products do. Hindsight is always 2020. When the three Dame brothers from Idaho pitched their idea for proof eyewear, one of a kind glasses frames crafted from wood, the concept itself impressed the sharks. Though the brothers presented some impressive numbers for a fairly new company, only sharks Robert and Kevin offered deals, both of which the brothers refused. We're about making, uh, making this thing go, and we want to build it with a good partner that supports us and wants to see this thing be successful. After the show, Proof used the wood trend to its advantage, almost tripling their sales shortly afterwards and continuing to grow and build their brand. After all, what's more appealing than being eco-friendly and stylish? Number four, coat checks. It is time to turn an inconvenience into an opportunity. In the words of founder Derek Paquet, this business turned, quote, an inconvenience into an opportunity. Pitching his high-tech coat checking system to the Sharks with zero sales under his belt was a risky move and resulted in the recent business school graduate walking away after rejections and a declined offer. There's companies out there that are valuing this at over 1.5 million. Uh, listen, but they're not writing a check. They're not giving you any money. Give them an answer. Yes or no. However, since appearing on the show, Coat Checks has been hired by prestigious events like New York Fashion Week, the Super Bowl, and Life in Color. This inconvenience sure was an opportunity and one that this company was quick to seize. Number three, Chef Big Shake, AKA CBS Foods. Our flagship product is the original shrimp burger. There's a burger for everyone's taste nowadays. Turkey, beef, veggie, vegan, shrimp. Wait, what was that last one? When Chef Sean Davis came into the tank and proposed his idea of shrimp burgers, the sharks were all about the taste but not about the valuation of the company. I don't think your whole company is worth two to $300,000 today. Leaving with no offer on the table, but plenty of praise for the food itself, Davis went home to a hero's welcome and another investor who granted a better offer than what he had originally asked for. With his burgers having been sold in over 2,000 grocery stores, Davis's appetite for business did not slow down. Well over a million dollars in sales, projected to do about five million dollars. Get yeah. out! Yes, yes that yes. is amazing. Awesome. Thirty grand awesome. to a mi brother. Awesome feeling. Seriously? Awesome feeling. Yes, man. Number two, Copa de Vino. Toast to all of you. Whoops. Here's an entrepreneur so confident in his product that he not only managed to get onto the show twice, he also refused offers both times. Pitching his wine by the glass concept. James Martin butted heads with the Sharks during his two separate appearances on the show. I'm here today to give you that elusive second bite of the apple. Experiencing a flood of sales and exposure after both his first and second appearances, Martin grew the company to the point where he was making over $25 million in revenue. Kevin O'Leary has called Martin, quote, the one that got away. And we can imagine that nowadays, wine might taste a little less sweet to Mr. Wonderful. When I last saw you, I said, you are a dead man walking and you were dead to me. Now, are you a ghost or are you real? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, ring aka doorbot so your voice comes out of it your voice comes out of it it's got a microphone and speaker like so it's two-way audio one-way video the sharks aren't the only investors prowling the waters originally named doorbot this product kick-started a new type of smart home security it's a doorbell equipped with a camera that streams footage to your smartphone think of it as caller ID for your front door. After rejection from most of the sharks and a declined offer, the product attracted other huge investors including Richard Branson, Goldman Sachs, and Qualcomm Ventures. Developer Jamie Siminoff has since rebranded the doorbot into the Ring app and continues to expand and create new products for his line. Good thing he opened the door when opportunity came knocking. Which makes this the perfect device to monitor your front door. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.